we all do it. And I feel like that is, I think a healthy consumption of social media is important. I think that's something that I really learned um, along the way is like not consuming things that make you feel a certain way. That has been a, a very big muscle I have had to flex, I would say, or work out because, you know, it does, like, social media is going to do that. You know, we've talked about this a little bit. Like, I do like my aesthetic a certain way. That's just how I am. I like it pretty. I like it looking good, but life isn't like that. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to the selfie show, you guys. Fun Friday is coming at ya, and Cousin Annalise is back. This episode, you guys, is going to be very spicy. So PSA forewarning, this is not one you want to be listening to with the kiddos in the car. And honestly, most of our episodes aren't, but this is more of I'm sipping on my coffee in the car on the way to work, earbuds are in as I'm jogging with the kiddos, adults above the ages of 16 kind of language and topics, and if you're a Sex in the City watcher, I'm talking like coloring outside of the lines kind of topics, so catch my drift. Okay, so for those of you who don't know me, my name is Tori Meskin, and I am the founder of the Nurse Tori Selfie Show. We are a platform on a mission to make healthcare hip one selfie at a time. We're dedicated to the fascinating people here in the healthcare space. We're sharing life journeys, career tips, resource tricks, and really getting to know the person behind the journey. So before we dive in today, I really wanted to come up front and say thank you. I know I usually save this for the end, but I really wanted to come up front and let you guys know every single rate and review, DM, message, text I get from you guys. I just, it means so much to me. You have no idea. Your support and this community is invaluable to me. There were actually two rates and reviews and DMs that I got this week that literally brought tears to my eyes. I want you guys to know that. Like, this is how serious I am about it. And I also want to relay this to you as someone who's producing this show. So a few things that really affect us. So the rates and reviews are huge, and I want to explain why. So when you guys go in and rate and review that is a validation that you are here with this community, that you appreciate those episodes, that someone brought value to you. And that helps us tremendously on the back end. Like that affects how the show is viewed by sponsors, by various platforms such as iTunes and Spotify and Stitcher. It really makes a difference. The second thing and a really amazing way to support our show is to use the links and codes that we provide to you here by our sponsors. That is humongous for us. It really validates to the sponsors that you guys are getting value. That's a huge way to support the show. And so I really want to give that a shout out. And the last way, if you don't have the financial means, is honestly to comment on our Instagram. Engage with us. I read every single message and you guys know I'm all about the real tea here. So here we go. Early on, I made the decision that I did not want to join an agency or a media company. I wanted to really keep this in the family, right? So translation. It takes multiple hours a week to produce this show between interviews and really getting to deep dive on each of the guests, not to mention the graphics and really wanting to bring you a chic brand, the production, the monthly subscriptions to distribute the podcast, not to mention having my wonderful brother-in-law, Matthew, paying him for the editing, as well as Jessica, who's helping me at the back end, and of course, swag. And I really want to thank you guys. So I don't want to make you pay for that. So I want to bring you the selfie badge reels and the stickers and the mailing costs. I want to cover all that. But so what I'm getting at is your support is so invaluable to me. So the three amazing ways to really support us are the rate and the reviews, supporting our sponsors with our links and our codes and engaging with us on our Instagram. And I just want to say once again, 
Thank you to every single one of you. The last couple weeks have been so amazing and I cannot wait to bring you more selfie shows. So without that, let's get into this super spicy episode. Well, thank you for coming back on, Annalise. Oh my gosh, no problem. I feel like I need a special intro now. Like, I need my own intro music. <laughs> you definitely do. <laughs> because I've been on here so many times now. You're infamous. I am. It's the your people, podcast voice. I need... My fans need a fan name. And I just... <laughs> I haven't come up with one yet, you guys. I'm so sorry. If you have any advice or if suggestions... I was, if I was witty enough, I would be able to come up with on on the top of my head, like, Anna's peeps. Anna... I don't know. Oh, I kind of like that. You know what I mean? Anna's like, peeps. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. How do the people feel? Leave a comment below. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag at me. Hashtag at me. At me, yo. <laughs> well, thank you for coming back on with us. Of this is course. your third episode. Third time's a charm, yep. Holy smokes. Yeah, hopefully this time is a little bit better than the two times before. I think the number one thing I got from you was your ASMR voice. People love it. Hello, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome. So ASMR. <laughs> um, so really quick before we dive into today, what's up? What's new? Like, what's going on? How's life? Oh, God. Gosh, let's see. Coronavirus mm. is still going on. Yeah. BLM is a thing. Yeah. That has always been a thing, but people just care about it now. Honey, <laughs> makes you feel a certain way, though. I know this. Oh, it does make you feel a certain way. But... Mm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> wink, wink. How's dating life? Speaking of which. Speaking of which, you guys, I feel a certain way because I just love we do you certain, you certain, i mean this has certain, a certain, certain way someone. honey i i love this for you but how i mean dating let's talk dating like um dating during coronavirus just isn't a thing i have been on <laughs> bumble you guys just in case you're wondering let me update you on my dating life yeah um i have been on bumble but they have a new thing <laughs> like in the description you can leave you can say is practicing social distancing <laughs> And I'm like, well, then why the f*** are you on the app if you're, if you're not going to meet up? I'm not here to play the long game. Oh, okay? my God. Does that come with a test as well? I hope so. Like, <laughs> come on. What are you doing? You're like, <sighs> Oh, my God. I kind of love that. I mean, yeah, good job, Bumble. You're being socially aware, whatever, Yahoo, but I'm bored. Like, how do you just, like, extra sexting or what? How do you do this? Basically. <laughs> A little extra side of like, hey, how you doing? Hey, how you doing, honey? <laughs> yes. Okay, well, that's kind of exciting. I mean, dating as a 23-year-old. You're 23, right? I don't even remember how old you are. Yeah, who knows? <laughs> yes, queen. Yes, I am 23. I'm still waiting for Victoria to find me a sexy doctor husband. I know, it's in the works. She has it's yet works. to do so. I have my eye out always. You know, I love this whole idea of hooking people up. Yeah. Help me out. You've I know. did it before. <laughs> I'm working just on not it. for me. <laughs> I'm working on it, okay? Oh my gosh, you guys, when she had the sexy doc on, I don't know if that's actually his name. <laughs> <laughs> you mean but Dr. Campbell? <laughs> is that the, the dancing The TikTok one? doc, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I call him sexy doc. Sexy doc, for sure. I stalked him so hard. <laughs> I think he's married. <laughs> It's very sad. He definitely has a girlfriend. Oh, That's okay. okay. That's what it is. I, was, I saw a woman on there and I was oh. like, oh, let's just get out of there. Heart crushed. Heart crushed. Christ. That's like McSteamy, McDreamy moment, you he know. He was my McDreamy. We definitely have those in the hospital, I will say. Like the docs or the surgeons or the anesthesiologists that are just extra steamy. You're like, oh, yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. I need you to find me like an ER doctor. Ooh, yeah, that's a good I just one. Think, oh, so hot and sexy. I feel steamy. like it's like ER docs. It's emergencies surgeons oh, oh okay <laughs> surgeons anesthesiology uh any kind of those like yeah definitely we'll have to find you one i love that yeah help me out okay we're working on it how's work what's up what's up with work anything new work's just been crazy i just i am incredibly lucky because even before the pandemic i worked from home yeah and i worked for a hospital so you do. not much has changed for me. Mm -hmm. And I know that other people's lives have changed so drastically. Even, you know, some of my close friends, it's changed drastically for them. And yeah. I just count my blessings because I know that my situation and your situation yeah, is totally. incredibly unique. 
you know, we are so lucky to have the jobs that we have yeah. and the job security that we have that comes with it. And so... Yeah, because you and, and we both had friends that have been affected by this. Um, yeah. Friends that have lost jobs. And yeah, it is. It's crazy. And um, But I do feel like there's a lot of shifting. I feel like a lot of people are shifting. And actually, I kind of think this is in a good way that a lot of people that I know are, you know, really pursuing the things they want to do. Yeah. And really assessing what it is like, okay, they were at a job that maybe they didn't love or not pursuing something because they just didn't have the time or the opportunities and now they do. Absolutely. I would say that home businesses, startups are taking off now. I saw a study that was saying, you know, this is the the biggest time for startups because people are forced to either work from home or they lost their job so they're at home all day when you work from home there's this kind of freedom that comes with it you kind of have that extra time when you're at your house and your comfort zone to on your break work on something creative that you like or yeah. you know if you lost your job you're at home anyway so it's a time to force yourself to reflect on well what do I do what how can I make the most of the situation so yeah and something that else that I actually I was just talking to another nurse about this which is interesting because I will say this for nursing I feel like no one in any field is really safe. I mean, people say, oh, you're in healthcare, like you have a job. But honestly, that's not necessarily the truth. Like a lot of people in healthcare have lost their jobs as well. A lot of um, nurse practitioners, PAs in family clinic settings, they lost their jobs, um, especially because people were not going in, you know, for certain reasons. In pediatric world, a lot of nurses, RTs, all of us it had been on the slower side. So, you know, a lot of us were kind of in jeopardy. Um, but it was interesting because I've been talking to a nurse and she was saying it's good to have three sources of income or mm. various sources of income, which I think is interesting. So, you know, you may have two different sources of income in your household and then maybe an extra one. So side gigs, side gigs are a good thing kind of like pursuing, you know, something for yourself. And maybe this is the time to really try and, you know, do that and pursue a side gig is actually this is the time to do it. Wow. I I know that. Yeah, I kind of love that and being your own boss or your hustler finding a way to make something that you love a business. Um, I'm here for those discussions. You have to help me come up with a business model for I know Selling my sexy ass online or something. <laughs> Patreon account. Patreon.com. <laughs> Honestly, exclusive. You guys, this podcast is sponsored by Patreon. <laughs> I'm kidding. Well, thank you for coming on again course, today, Annalise. Um, <laughs> yeah, I just love you. So we, I did drop a a question box this week, mm-hmm. and okay. or two actually. And I thought it would be fun to do a fun one just to kind of break it up. And because I just love kind of doing what get behind the mic and talk about some other things that are going on and just have a fun moment because I feel like you bring out the best of me (laughs) for sure. Um, But I thought it would be kind of fun to go all over today and answer some extra questions that I've had like kind of repeatedly. So it'd be fun to kind of address them all here with you with me today and your sexy podcast voice (laughs) i don't understand i think my voice is heinous no it's really good it's a good podcast like some people have it and it's really Mm. funny because actually i've had to like really work on my podcast voice your subtle podcast voice yes because (laughs) uh there's certain podcasts you listen to and i love the content but i really don't love their voice Mm. you know what I mean yeah and it's not like a video where you can just look at their face and totally like a beautiful skin. girl you could look at it all day it doesn't and be matter like, what's coming out of her mouth doesn't matter butter it was it's not a butter face <laughs> moment it's like I love her face on podcasts you kind of got to know what you're going to talk about totally that um, and you also have to have like it's a finesse right like I've had to like bring my tone down or bring like it's like I don't want to be shrilly but then I want to sound really confident but then you know and then also what you're saying it's like I kind of had have had to warm up to and like gain this confidence in what you're saying mm-hmm. and it's really interesting because if I, I know or I can tell when I'm talking to someone if I'm not confident in what I'm saying and I want to work on that. So I've been working on it. I love it. Good yeah. job. 
since the beginning, I feel like I really like it's a shifting thing. And as you know, podcasting is a lot of energy. It is, you guys. I am wiped at the end of these. <laughs> at the end of these episodes, it's I know, insane. And I don't know why. All it's I'm weird. Doing is talking. Mm-hmm. I talk all day. Should I be know. Professional. At this. Like we've literally talked about. It. We're like we should have a mic in front of us right now while we're talking because it's so good. Yeah, but also like. <laughs> Some of the things some we, things say, we should like, not have a mic for yeah, at all. <laughs> but it's interesting because it's podcasting and this platform is a whole different kind of energy. It's like you just have to really have I I like podcasts where they're going somewhere. Like I have a message or I have something right. to say and I have a strategy and learning yeah. that strategy and how to find like something and pull them out of that person and get the conversation that is intriguing yeah it's weird because i remember the first time i came on here you kind of had not a script but an outline of what we were going to talk about and i was like what we don't need an outline. we're just going to talk mm-hmm. right it's a pot we just talk we have a conversation and holy guacamole am i glad that we had it was just so weird i i wouldn't say it's scripted but you need that yeah that sheet that question that to keep the conversation flowing and the outline an appropriate direction to make sense yeah and i will say it's it's been a learning curve because some of the people i bring on i know very well and so like for example like today this is really easy because i know you and i love you and like the banter is really easy but then for people I don't know, I have to do, you know, you have to do a lot of back end research. I have to know this person and know things that probably people wouldn't know. I have to take the time to think about it and find the angle and, you know, keep the interest. So it's definitely been a learning curve, I would say. Um, and, you know, kind of figuring out all the back end things. I've learned to when I need to get out of the mic. Mm. Because there's times where poor Matthew has had to edit things out so much where I I (laughs) notice I'm like talking or like trying to validate someone and saying yes, 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 and trying to validate them. But then we go through the editing and I'm like, it's so annoying that I'm talking while they're talking. Yeah. (laughs) Like, I need to get out of the mic. So it's a learning curve. Um, And I love this platform. This platform has been so much fun. It's crazy to think, like, I'm literally sitting in front of a mic in front of you in this little basement. Yeah. In my little studio. And, like, this is, you know, something that I know I love putting out every week, you know, and people listen and and enjoy it. That's so cool. It's weird. That's so cool, though. And to be able to give this as a resource to you guys and to be able to hopefully give some inspiration and some you know huge shout outs to different specialties and to give an insight into the healthcare world it's it's complex it's crazy anyways let's get into some questions okay diving in here we go you guys the first one is riveting it's (sighs) really intense we're gonna separate the people in this one okay coffee or tea I think that's an easy one. We're yeah. definitely going to go with coffee on yeah. that one. <laughs> However, there's a moment for tea. Oh, 100%. I like my tea at night. But I'm definitely a coffee girl. You are a coffee girl. And typically, I would be more of, like, honestly, a coffee bean girl over a Starbucks. Do they even have coffee bean out here? Yes. Really? Yes. I don't know. The first time I ever went to a coffee bean was in San Diego, and I thought it was a San Diego thing. No, it's definitely... Oh, my God. See, this is where we're at. I love coffee bean. I think it's smoother, um, but for all the Star... I mean, I'm a Starbeezies girl. I love Starbeezies, and they're just, you know... I feel like Starbucks is just the easy person's coffee because it's everywhere, and it's just you know what you're... You know what you're going to get uh, yeah. every time. Yeah. It's like just... Totally. Standard coffee. But I like around. tea at night. I'm a tea at night kind of girl. I love that for you. Mm-hmm. I'm kind of like, meh, I'm both. <laughs> You're um, like, I'll take a beer. Yeah. <laughs> it's 9 a.m. I'll take a beer. <laughs> oh, Brittany or Christina? I know the answer to this one, too. That's the easiest one. Brittany, for sure. Brittany, hands down. That that was definitely your generation. But I, I know more Brittany songs. But I don't know. Christina is just like... She's got a different swag. She had swag. Yeah. She was cool i yeah. feel like britney was your pop princess that's why i loved her but christina was like your 
Yeah, kind she the had the. Yeah, I would agree with that. I liked it. Like the chaps moment with yes. her just hair. Yeah, with, like black and, just, and bleached blonde hair. Yes, I loved it. Okay, I was definitely here for that moment. Loved yeah. that. Yeah, she's super hot there. I just think overall aesthetic wise and life wise, like I'm girl. just a Britney girl. Like the red suit and the, <laughs> you know, I just the leather and the snakes yeah. and the pop princess like fire coming from behind her just mo- I'm like yes 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 it's just Brittany we're here for it I'm here for it's her great yeah favorite Netflix show um okay well more recently I would say Lennox Hill I was telling you about this earlier today so it's a docuseries following four docs it's I think there's only one season but um it follows four docs in New York City and just sort of their one's like a resident or a fellow, I think one's a surgeon, blah, blah, blah. And it goes through their life. And then um, they added an extra episode of these doctors working through COVID, through the pandemic, which is oh, crazy. Oh, cool. I want to yeah. watch that. It's really good. And it's emotional. Like, I watch it and I'm like, oh, my God, I totally feel for these providers. But um, it's only one episode. I really do wish that someone had caught on to this quickly and actually run through COVID or like through the pandemic as it was happening, like as a series, Mm -hmm. like I really wish that would have happened. Yeah. Cause that actually, I think that's how people learn, you know, and nowadays people want to see things in time. And I think a producer probably, you know, unfortunately just given the situations, they probably couldn't get into where they really needed to get in. But yeah, I think that would have been really cool. Um, and Netflix wise, other than that, I mean, there's so many. God, I'm in that awkward phase where I need to find a new show because I'm just rewatching old shows I've already seen. Mm. So, time out. Can we talk about Outlander? Oh, okay. Does that count though? Because it's not like a Netflix show, but it's that, on. I don't Netflix. even know which. Okay, I don't know where it originated. But anyway, only the first. Long guy. story short, all my ladies oh out my there, gosh, okay, ladies, ladies. Ladies. Go find yourself a Scottish man. Ladies, <laughs> if you are in need of a hot ass show. If you're just lonely. If you're lonely. If you want to feel like. If you need just a some minute. sexy time. Honey, get yourself some woo lube and go watch this show. Oh. oh my God, it's so hot. Okay, so this is like basically like chick porn. I would oh, I would, I would, put it on the level of porn. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's so hot. So hot. It's just, it's like, okay, first of all, the first couple episodes, mm, okay, like whatever, you're kind of diving in and you're like, what is this? I don't understand it. Right. And then you really get into it and it is so good. So oh my good. God. Oh. Basically, this girl goes back in time to Scotland like yeah. late 1700s meets the most attractive man I have ever seen in my entire life. I wouldn't go that far, but I would say... Whoa. Okay, mm. he's definitely my type. He's definitely your type. <laughs> like burly, redhead, like, oh yes. Oh my God, so attractive. Yeah, for sure your type. But I just feel like for me, like, it's not even that. It's just like the buildup and the sexual tension between yeah. the two characters and is then, really hot. And then the <laughs> between the two characters yeah it's really good oh my god yeah insane okay that's a really good one everyone go watch outlander right even guys it's outlander a good show. uh ozark um i've heard that one's good i've never seen it oh really yeah oh my god it's so good you have to watch it okay we're gonna watch that it's a it's about a family who kind of like accidentally not accidentally start working with the drug cartel and they're in um yeah it's it's really really good i i'm here for that one uh ozark's really good there's a lot of good ones right now all right uh taco or burrito taco for sure with enchilada sauce on the side Burrito though. No. Breakfast burritos. Breakfast burritos are good, but I I'm like really getting down to what I like. I really I'm here for the tacos. Mm. I gotta say burrito on that one. I gotta I really do. Mm. Okay. I'm here for the taco with enchilada sauce on the side. Mm. What makes you nervous? Oh, I think overall, if I'm talking like life, uh, and more recent circumstances like maybe like rejection or backlash or initial I think I was really nervous about that 
think I'm getting a tougher skin now or like maybe not leaving a mark like failure or not hitting not achieving things that I want to achieve that does really really get to me what about you I was so deep I was gonna say like spiders (laughs) (laughs) like they make me so nervous they do I mean yeah because I'm like what are you gonna do? I mean, if we're going there, I it's snakes, and that's not even a nervous thing. That makes me terrified. Mm. Snakes are my least. If I have a nightmare, it's for sure about a snake. For me, it's lizards. I can do a snake, but lizards are just mm. like their little feet. Do that again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. All right. Uh, morning routine. What do you do on work days and off days? Okay, so work days. We've talked a little bit about this prior. Okay, I'm literally like, sprinting. I barely wake up and I sprint out the door. <laughs> <laughs> okay, biatch. <laughs> um, okay, so I, okay, night before. It's all about the prep, though. Okay, oh, so 100%. In, in order for me to do that, I have to lay out my scrubs, lay everything out, socks, bra, undies, everything. My, the, you know, everything down to my badge. And pens that I'm going to use the next day. Like, everything. (laughs) (laughs) And then, depending on when I wake up, it's a little bit of makeup now because of COVID and quarantine. Absolutely no makeup from the nose down. (laughs) So, it doesn't even matter. I'm like, maybe I'm putting on mascara now. Maybe if I'm lucky, if I have enough time. Um, And then, I will usually sprint upstairs, grab myself some iced coffee, throw together the lunch situation, grab my bag, and I'm out the door. Um, On days that I'm off, if it's like a day coming off of two days of work or like even one, sometimes I'm just like exhausted. Usually I'll sleep in until like honestly nine just because I don't get home until like 8.30. Yeah, you get home late. And then, you know, I take a shower, you wind down. By the time I'm in bed, it's like 1030. I'm not in, like, I can't sleep until like, I don't usually honestly sleep until 12 on a regular night anyways. Yeah. That is so insane. I'm a late nighter. You guys, I go to bed at 830. (laughs) She literally does. Like, we're podcasting right now, and it's, like, 8.30, and I'm like, like, we're going to lose you. (laughs) And fall asleep mid-podcast. 100%. (laughs) Um... But yeah, so for me, I usually sleep in a little bit. And then um, so I like to wake up and I've learned some of these skills from my favorite podcast, The Skinny Confidential with Lauren Bostic. So first thing I do is I open up the blinds. I want to get some light in. Like I'm really big about getting that natural light. Also, side note, Jacob and I replaced our lights by the bed with red lights. I don't like it. Oh my God, I love it. I'm obsessed with it. Like, we do not... I am not... I, I love the red light. I mean, I love that you love it, but it's, you guys were so excited to show me and <laughs> I was not into it. <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm obsessed with it. I really like it. So it does... It kind of, like, sets the tone for, like, going to bed. It just, like, gives me BDSM vibes. I love that, though. <laughs> You're, like, perfect. Done. <laughs> Whorehouse. We live in a whorehouse. <laughs> I'm okay with that. It's fine. Um, okay, so red light at night. In the morning, I like natural light. Waking up, I always make the bed because I feel like I have to like set the day right. You have to set the day right. I just like getting back into my bed where I left off. Okay, weird. No, no. Like, ooh, right where I left off. <laughs> <laughs> I need to have organization in my life, and I feel like making good bed helps me. So we make the bed. And then um, if I do any laundry, do a little laundry. And then I go upstairs and I make my coffee. Got to have coffee. My first thing is like literally like I don't know what it is. It's the ritual. It's the taste. It's the waking up. It's the caffeine. It's everything. And then we start the day with I usually try and get some emails out of the way. And then either school or, you know, kind of going throughout the day. Workout usually. My workouts typically have been I used to be a, an afternoon or a night workout girl now I'm definitely more mor- morning for sure yeah I love working out in the morning it gets my day started yeah but honey you do like 5 a.m workouts and I am yeah. not here for that 
Okay, my gym reopened. You guys, it's COVID safe. Yeah. It, it's as safe as it can be for mm-hmm. a gym. I go to F45. It's so incredible. Sponsor yeah. me. <laughs> you guys, I have the cutest trainer. I'm so in love with him. <laughs> Matthew Matthew Bowman, if you listen to this podcast, please marry me. <laughs> okay, wait, time out. Can we talk about this? Okay, so <laughs> she's telling me about this trainer He's earlier so today, right? And He's I'm so and cute. she's like telling me how cute he is and like he how like much she around the gym. She like loves him. And then I'm like, Annalise, but have you stalked him? And I go, No, of course not. Okay. So first of all, the fact that you haven't stalked him, weird. So she hasn't stalked him. So I'm like, okay, let's look him or look him up or see if we can try and find him. Okay. So Annalise, what did we find <laughs> when we found him? We found his Instagram and 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 it just it wasn't my thing. <laughs> okay, so let's explain the dynamic here, you guys. Um, I. Let's explain the background. I'm not a social media person. I, <laughs> Ironically. At all. Yeah. You're I, really not. At all. Like, my Instagram doesn't make sense. Like, it's just... Her aesthetic is very all over the place. My aesthetic is I don't have an aesthetic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here for that. And I like other people that, like, partnership-wise. I'm not into the social media guys, influencers, celebs. Well, let's just put it this way. He's trying way too hard. Way too hard. To be an Instagram <laughs> To be an Instagram model, like, model yeah. He's got, like, these poses oh, over here. God, like, like, look the, back at it. And like, this, honey. Like, the sexy eyes. Oh, like, licking the lips. Yeah. And like, I was just like, oh, no. And, like, not in, like, a good hot way. Like, in, like, a... Yeah. Matthew. Okay, and then we... I, okay, so here's the thing. And I, I'm i here for all the conversations, right? But there's just something about a straight man <laughs> who's posing like that yeah. on Instagram that it's just... It misses the mark. A bit. It it's does. just not like... It's a hit and a miss. <laughs> no, it's like, okay, here's the thing. Like, I can appreciate girls on Instagram who want to put their ass out, fine, do that. Um, Go for it, my man. lovely gay men who want to do a little flare moment, yes, please, I'm all for that. I'm here for the girls who are trying to do it. I'm here for that. But for something about a straight man... It just doesn't... Yeah, it it's doesn't not work. as It doesn't, it doesn't translate as much. It doesn't. But Matthew, I still love you. Please marry me. <laughs> oh, God. I don't know. I, I don't know how I feel about it. I was like, he's trying to flex a little too hard. He's cute, but... He's cute. I don't know. Okay, we're here for it. We are. Dude, mm-hmm. when are you getting merch? Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. That question appeared multiple times. I it's... just want you to know. And let me tell you guys, okay. I am trying for you. Yeah, I know. So, Annalise, actually, you were the first part. You literally told me this so early on. You were like, you need to. like, get me a tipster shirt. Okay, I know. Tipster. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But now, selfie swag. Okay. We need it, honey. We're working on it. I've actually done some research. Okay, so here's the thing. <laughs> I have so much on my plate right now that I'm like, mm, adding another thing just doesn't sound like crazy wonderful, but... I really want to. Okay, so we did start with the stickers and the badge reels. And I feel like for right now, I actually want to keep those exclusive to people who leave reviews for the podcast because I actually want to thank people for doing that. And I kind of want to make it an exclusive thing where if you do, we will send it to you. And it costs money on my end to do that, like shipping and all that. Like that's actually when you add up, it's a lot of money, but it's worth it to me to say thank you to my community. And I do feel like for people who are willing to like, you know, give us a little feedback and tell me what you thought and, you know, your favorite part. It just, it means a lot to me. So that's my thank you. However, I really do want to move into like hats, sweatshirts, t-shirts. So um, it's very intentional. It's coming. Um, I wanted to have something where like the brand kind of spoke for itself. I didn't want to be the center of the brand. Like I would rather, I know. But you are the brand. I know, but I, (laughs) I do appreciate that. But I still feel (laughs) like I wanted something where it's like, you're buying this icon, like my little selfie Selena or, you know, maybe even the tipster thing. We can kind of turn that into a thing, but we're coming up with some ideas I do feel like it's coming soon. We'll keep you guys updated on that. 
I want your face plastered on a (laughs) t-shirt. That's so YouTuber. (laughs) I am not a YouTuber, okay? (laughs) We're, yeah. I keep on trying to get her to do that, too. (laughs) I know. I know. We've come up with some funny ideas, but we'll see. Okay, also, this one is so, so funny to me. So funny to me. (laughs) Is your brother single? (laughs) Oh! Vincent is... Sadly, he's not sadly. We love his girlfriend. He's he is taken. We, shout out to Megan. Shout out to Megan. She better be listening. This will be a real test to see if she's listening. She puts <laughs> up with his shit. She really does. You guys should have seen his Fourth of July ensemble. Oh my god, I can't with him. <laughs> and they went out in public. <laughs> he is for those like translation in our heads. Like he's like walking NASCAR fan number one. Like he's just kind of like, like this a walking American flag. Yeah, it's like ridiculous. It's so He's funny. just crazy in every way, but she puts up with him, so it's great. We love him, and we love her. Yes, we love her Good so job, much. Megan. We're proud of you. Love you. Being on social media and not comparing your thoughts. Okay, no secret here. I'm obsessed with life hacks, especially when it comes to skincare and wellness products. Especially during this pandemic, when wearing a mask at the bedside for 12 solid hours has my skin a certain way, and we're dealing with all this stress, I am looking for ways to optimize my skin and nutrition, because what goes inside your body truly matters. So let me tell you guys about my latest favorite, Hum. As a starting point, Hum has been featured on Forbes, Vogue, Allure, Well and Good, Mind Body Green, but I really wanna tell you why I like Hum. So Hum is a nutrition supplement line, and it offers a combo of potent, clean, and clinically proven ingredients designed for specific goals, such as clear skin, improved sleep, hair growth, balanced mood, and overall, a healthier body starting from the inside out. So let me tell you about what really sold me on these products. Being in the healthcare field, this was actually really important to me. These products and the recommendations are made from registered dietitians. So let me take you through it. You go on their website and you take a three minute quick evaluation. It goes through your diet, your moods, your workout styles, general health, skin concerns, beauty goals, and then it formulates suggested hum products to help you fill those gaps. Not to mention, a registered dietitian is also available to answer questions for ongoing support, and hum only uses all natural, clinically proven ingredients that are highly absorbable, non-GMO, and free of common allergens such as gluten, soy, and shellfish. Of course, I had to try the products first, and one of the recommendations that I absolutely love right now is called Collagen Love. So this supports skin, elasticity, and firmness. It helps minimize appearance of fine lines with collagen peptides, hyaluronic acid, and vitamin C packed all in this amazing supplement. Another one that I've been taking is for my skin specifically because I've been breaking out quite a bit from wearing that mask at the bedside, is a Skin Squad Pre and Probiotic. So this can contains nine ultra targeted strains of good bacteria to help balance the gut. Hum has been formulated by experts. It is clean and natural, rigorously tested, and provides real results for your mind, body, and mood. And guess what? I have something super awesome for all the Selfie Podcast listeners. Hum is offering you 20% off of your first order of $29 or more with code SELFIE, C-E-L-L-F-I-E. Not to mention the fact that I am a freak for efficiency. I need things delivered to my home. So Hum offers a fabulous, flexible subscription where they deliver your super cute, chicly packaged supplements right to your doorstep. So if you guys want to give Hum a try, head over to humnutrition.com, fill out their quiz, and use code SELFIE, C-E-L-L-F-I-E, at checkout for your 20% off. All right, you guys, let's head back to the show. Oh, that's a good one. Okay, um... We're all guilty of it. We all do it. And I feel like that is, I think a healthy consumption of social media is important. I think that's something that I really learned um, along the way is like not consuming things that make you feel a certain way. Um, That has been a, a very big muscle. I have had to flex, I would say, or work out. Um, because, you know, it does, social media is going to do that. And I do think, you know, we've talked about this a little bit. Like I do like my aesthetic a certain way. That's just how I am. I like it pretty. I like it looking good. Uh, It's how I am. I've never, I'm not trying to 
be the most unperfect per- like I like my aesthetic looking nice mm-hmm. but life isn't like that and I'm okay and I, I do like talking about that and kind of going more in depth on the stories and now on podcasting and I think that's important I think it's important for everybody to see the not pretty part um, you know and a lot of if I think if you're consuming someone who's only putting out something and you're only feeling a certain way, then you just don't consume it. Um, I just think that the comparison thing is too easy to do. And more than likely, the person who you're looking at is struggling with something that you are very similarly in a different way. Um, and I think that's that's just life. That's human. And I think to think that all these people have a perfect life is just, it's just, I don't even think that way. In my head, I'm like, I know people are struggling with things and they're just not showing it, right? I mean, that's just reality. So I think a healthy consumption is important and not comparing yourself because you never know, you know, what that person is going through, whether they have a family member going through cancer, whether they are in an abusive relationship, whether they um, are financially unstable, they lost a job, they lost a child, they lost, you know, like a parent, whatever. You never know what someone is going through. Um, And I think it's just, we have this false you know, social media has done this thing where we have this false sense of things. But at the same time, I still like it. I still like Instagram. I don't care. I like the pretty aesthetics. I like going to, I love the lifestyle feeds. Like I, I like them and I'm going to appreciate them for what they are. And if it's making me feel a certain way, turn it off. You know, I think you have the freedom to do that and to walk away from it. Yeah. I think we all battle the comparison game. But I love comparing myself. It keeps me humble. <laughs> <laughs> Your one-liners are just phenomenal. I agree. I think right. another, yeah. It's but it is hard and come on, everybody wants yeah. the, the swimsuit model's body, but 100%. And also it's scary and hard now with this cancel culture going around. It's, yeah. Yeah, it is. It's scary to put yourself out there even at all. In any type of way other than being positive and happy. So yeah, I think that goes into it too. Some some of these people who only post these incredible pictures and videos. Mm -hmm. And part of the reason that maybe they don't go into some of the other stuff that's happening because people can be so... Cancel culture. Yeah, I agree. It's so scary. I couldn't imagine having a following. I would hate it. I'd be terrible at it. Yeah, I mean, you look even recently, like, some bloggers and YouTubers, like, there's a lot of really heavy stuff going on in the social media world right now. Um, I just stick to my... I like staying in my bubble. And I do also feel like um, you know, I've talked about my anxieties. I've talked about my mental health, my family's mental health. I've been very open about that. Um, and I think that's important for people to know and understand that, like, it's not perfect. I'm not perfect. I battle anxiety. Um, you know, we have mental health in our family like no other. Um, we battle that. And so I think it's that's relatable. And, you know, I think that's why for me sort of moving over here to this platform has been really important because while I do love the pretty aesthetics and I do love those conversations, I think it's equally as important to have these conversations where we're like, look, it's not perfect. I had to take a minute away from X, Y, and Z. I needed to, I'm battling this. I'm going through this. Like, those are very real conversations and it's important for people to hear. Yeah. And I mean, that kind of goes into, there's a couple of questions on you and your anxiety and people saying, thank you for being real. But like, how do you deal with it? How do you cope with it? What What do you, Yeah. what do you do to deal with it? Um. So I, a couple things. The one big thing I've picked up on again is working out. That's actually a really big one for me is I, I, kind of mentioned this earlier in the week on my stories, but I feel like when I train mentally like an athlete, I feel better. And that doesn't necessarily mean like going to the gym for two hours every day. Like for me, that's honestly like in my head, I tell myself I literally only have to do 15 minutes of a run, right? Or like of something in the morning. And 
I'll pop in my music and I'll go on a run and I'll start doing sprints or I'll do squat lunges or I'll do some like get my heart rate up and do some hit quick hit training. And then that quickly turns into 45 minutes and get those endorphins going, start getting my badass girl vibes and that feels good and that helps me mentally. So that's one thing. The other thing is trying to keep my diet cleaner. I'm not saying I'm perfect by any means. We love a beer. Yeah, yeah. I love (laughs) a beer. I love a spicy margarita. Yes, Mm -hmm. please. My gin and tonics, like give it to me all day. Um, But do I do think eating healthier has helped. Um, I'm also I've been seeing a therapist and I've been talking to someone lately and working through some things that I need to work through mentally, which have been long term things I have been dealing with for a while. Um, Headspace, I've been doing a little bit of meditation. It's not necessarily something that I do every day, but I really do try when I feel like my heart rate, my, like I start, my heart gets like really quick and rapid, like a butterfly beat. Mm -hmm. I will very consciously work on breath work. And so breath work is something that I really feel like helps me a lot. Like I literally will slow down and try and take some deep breaths and really do that. So there's a couple of things I've definitely, those are my most tangible tips, like breath work, some meditation, therapy, clean up the diet, even acupuncture. Acupuncture is great. I know we haven't been able to do that as much. Obviously COVID sucks and that's yeah. taken away almost everything, but yeah. You know, there's still we should things. cancel COVID. We should cancel that. Cancel COVID, COVID everyone. Yes. Trending on Twitter. Done. Trending. <laughs> done. Trending. COVID's done. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. Oh, my gosh. Well, something that helps me with anxiety is drinking. So oh, yeah. That's a good one, too. What favorite drink do you like to make? Ooh. Okay. So, lately, um, I haven't made it as much, but a spicy margarita So, okay, here's the thing, though. It needs to be fresh. Oh, We need some lime, fresh lime juice, some fresh lemon juice, fresh jalapeno. Agave. Silver. A little bit of agave. I don't like it too sweet, though. And then some silver tequila with a lovely salt and tahini rim. So good. I mean, all that sounds amazing, minus the jalapeno. The jalapeno is so good. Mm. <laughs> what else can I put in there? Okay, so the, oh, the oh, second drink. Sorry, I'm gonna do two drinks. Okay. Um, our gin and I don't even know what it was. It was like a citrus drink. We had like a gin and it wasn't a tonic. Gin. It was kind of a lemon drop. Yes, the one um, that I made. Mm-hmm. <gasps> you guys, it was so good. Hit me up for the recipe. <laughs> okay, it's it's gin, fresh lemon juice, triple sec. And then a simple syrup. Yeah. Oh, my God. It was oh. so good. Oh it was gosh. super fresh. I'm here for the gin drinks. I mean, we were all... I used to hate though. gin. Why do I love gin now? I love gin. I oh. love it. Yeah. So much. Probably because it's the only alcohol I haven't thrown up on. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag 23. <laughs> uh, yeah. Definitely. I'm staying away hardcore from the raspberry flavored vodka. Oh, vodka in general. Yuck. Ugh. Terrible. I can't. Oof. No. Uh, you're standing on a desert island. What three things do you bring? Oh, okay. Oh, 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 okay. So, husband. People count, right? No. No. Mm. No? Let's say you're stranded with Jake, and you can bring th- three things. What do okay. You bring? Phone. Real, it's gonna die in a day. <laughs> Charger. <laughs> You're on an island. A selfie desert. light. <laughs> oh my gosh, those are horrible things. Horrible. Okay, no. Um, see, but then I say like, oh, I would bring a book, but I'm not a. F- I don't read books. No, people who say you'd bring a book are wrong. Yeah, no, it's the wrong. That's all the wrong way to go. All the wrong. What are you gonna do with a book? I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, you need, like, a knife. You reread it, like, five times. Like, five billion times. Exactly. I'd be bored. Unless it was a boat. Okay, Annalise, what happened. would you bring? I would be strategic about it. Okay, what? A knife. Oh, okay. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Some matches. Oh. And a book on how to build a boat. So get, off, get off that goddamn island. <laughs> 
I love you. This is why I love you. See, I'm I would be the worst. Um, have you seen that show? The survival. What's the survival show that Jacob watches? Oh Dude, god! I don't know, literally any of those survival shows, I would die so fast. Okay, he watches this survival show, and I'm watching this, and I'm like, I would literally die in the first day. Yeah, I'm the worst survivalist. I would not survive. I wouldn't know how to do anything. I, I would. Don't... I'm. I'm pretty strategic in life. I will say. Yeah, but, but people who are like, the zombie apocalypse apocalypse is coming. I would make it so far. I'm like, no, you wouldn't. <laughs> no, you wouldn't. there's. There's no electricity. There's no running water. Yeah. No. There's nothing. There's no phone lines. Yeah, that would... Like, most people would not survive with that. Yeah. Only the true, true, true... Yeah. ...survivalists would survive that. Yeah. Like, I, all these 23-year-old guys who... I would survive. It's like, no, you no, wouldn't. No, you wouldn't. Shut up. No, you wouldn't. Go home. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Canceled. Bye, honey. Canceled. <laughs> yeah. Somebody asked, work-life balance while dating... Okay, so when I was dating, well, I was also on night shift then. So I feel like, okay, part of it was um, I just feel like I pretty much did me. And if it fit into my life, it worked out. I mean, of course, now with COVID and everything, it just sucks because dating right now is just Not yuck. A thing. I mean, you probably could do a lot of sexting, but you know. Yeah, you um, can, baby. I feel like w- working night shift, well, and I was younger, so I feel like when I was working night shift, it was kind of fun. You know, it was like, okay, you're up all night, you get home, have a mimosa, go to bed for a couple hours, and then get up, <laughs> and then you're like out and about doing, I don't know, it just was a lot easier when I was younger and more fun. Um, I loved my crew of people because I feel like we were all single at the same time too, so it was kind of fun. Um, I do feel like having a partner or someone you're dating who understands your lifestyle is important because you're going to have to miss out out on weekends. You're going to have to miss out on some holidays. You're going to have to work potentially nights and people have to get used to that. And that is, it is a lifestyle. I will say that. Yeah. And also I don't get home. I mean, Jake knows this. Like I don't get home till like 830 at night. Well, there was another question that was saying... How does Jake feel about the social media aspect of your job? And how does he feel about that? That's a good one. Um, Okay. Well, okay. Initially, when all this really started, I think he was super annoyed. He was just like, get the (laughs) F out of my face. Don't put your phone in my... Stop videotaping me. Put it (laughs) fucking away, Tori. Like, I'm over you. (laughs) Um, So, initially, I think... The, you know, for the first, like, year, it was just kind of, it was something that kind of bothered him, but it's interesting because I think my social media also has evolved, right? So, it's, like, I started as Tips from Tori, and it was, like, Tips, my blog, and, like, just, like, wedding stuff and fun things that were going on in my life, and then it evolved to some NICU lifestyle And then now more so, like, you know, my platforms are expanding and things like that. But I just think now he's really understanding where I want to go with it and my purpose of it. It's not like I just want to put my ass out on social media and be this, you know, that's not the purpose. My purpose is to really help and inspire and give resources. And now a bigger picture is this is the podcast. And so, you know, when you're branding and sort of like having, for me, it's like such a fun, creative process. Like I literally feel like throughout the day, I go throughout my day and I'm like, oh, that'd be kind of fun. Like, let's find the angle there and like do this. And like, this is what I'm doing and I want to share it. And it's just fun. So I think he's kind of gotten on board with it. It is a balance. I will say this, you know, there's a time and a place and like, you know, now when we go to dinner, I'm not on my phone. Like I put my phone away or at night I do turn my phone off at a certain time because I'm like, I'm with my husband and I don't want to have the phone on. Um, I try and do my engaging and like DMs. I, I will time batch that. So I'll do like, a you know, for an hour in the morning and then I'll do, typically I try to do an hour at night or in the afternoon. Um, it's a lot of things are very much kind of, you know, in the moment. And I love that. So, but at the same time, I'm trying to be conscious of my, of my marriage and it's a balance. You know, I now know how much he wants to be part of it. And so I 
push it to the boundaries that he lets me. <laughs> always towing the line. I'm always, you know, give me a minute, I'm going to take a mile. So, um, but it's fun now. I think we have our thing. Like, Jacob likes, he likes being a part of it, but it's, you know, there's there's a limit. Yeah. <laughs> as any Instagram husband knows. <laughs> Well, as any Instagram mom knows, the question, when are the kids happening? Oh, we've been getting that question a lot lately, haven't we? So much. From me in particular. You know, you want to know who wants to know, you guys? Your mom. mom. (laughs) Janice. Janice wants to know. She just knows that none of her kids are having kids anytime soon. That is false. Throwing it at Victoria. Your sister Rebecca is gonna have kids for sure, but not soon. <laughs> also true. Um, okay, so unless she she could though, you know, who knows? Um, She's got some wild nights in her. Yeah, she has. <laughs> <laughs> She'll like come back from Europe pregnant. Yeah, that's that what's would gonna be a happen. Rebecca move. Or yeah, no, totally. That's for sure what she would do. <laughs> um, okay, so um. To be continued. It's definitely a conversation. It's more of a conversation right now than it has been. Jacob is, like, straight up, um, like, coming at me. (laughs) Or in you. (laughs) Bo, he's trying. He's really trying. He, like, wants to be a dad. It's actually really cute. He wants to be a dad so bad. I just need a minute. I don't know what it is. I just, like, you know, I'm... In the heat of, of uh, you know, with school and all of those things. And we're going to go into more of that conversation at another podcast. But work and, you know, kind of everything with growing the podcast and, you know, just kind of wanting to have everything set before we have the kids. And there's no ever, there's never a good time, right? Like, I honestly do feel like I could do all of this with a kid on my hip, but it does change your workflow. <laughs> it definitely shifts the dynamic a bit, I yes. would say, even though I don't have kids. I yeah. believe it does. But I do feel like that's coming soon. We'll see. Um, who knows? You know, maybe like next month I'll be pregnant. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. You guys. wake up tomorrow. It's like ah oh, shit. There it is. Ah shit. Now I'm pregnant. <laughs> We're gonna start rumors. This was my favorite question. I think of all the questions. What's your opinion when people think COVID is a hoax? Um. Uh. You know, it's tough because, and this is kind of like what I was telling you earlier. Is I feel like. This is where I wish we had, like, a really awesome docu-series going through what people are going through because I feel like nowadays people want to see and understand it more than ever. And I get that because I do, you know, this particular virus, of course, is something where, you know, you kind of have to quarantine off everything. You have to shut everything down, which is crazy. And, you know, people get crazy when they're isolated. But I also feel like, out of the you know, it's, I just working I'm still working in a hospital setting and I'm working in hospitals where there are COVID patients and I'm not frontline I'm not you know I'm not working directly with COVID patients every single day but it's hard because people don't understand these kinds of things right they don't understand the concept of like viruses and antibodies and antigens and how it affects your body and like it's kind of like that idea of like I can't you know out of sight out of mind or you don't understand, like, you don't see what's going on and what we're battling as an uphill battle. And to be fair, I get that. People should be able to see it. But at the same time, it's like you have to understand that it's it's really taxing on healthcare providers. This is probably one of the most, this is, hopefully this never happens ever again. And we, you know, are able to crush this thing. But it's really taxing on on everyone who's fighting it. Even people, I mean, I don't, I'm not working immediately front line, but this is really rough on everybody. Um, it's emotionally taxing. It's, you know, physically taxing. It's everything. So that it's hard, you know. Yeah, I think we all just really need to come together as a community and decide that we want to help one another instead of fight with one another. Yeah. And just say, hey, if we all work together as a community, we could maybe... Let's just put a bow on it. You're so just, cute. I'll put a bow on it. Let's just, just put a bow on it. I mean, it's, yeah, if we all just come together and say, hey, we want to help each other instead of hurt each other, yeah. I think this battle would get a lot easier. Yeah, I, you know, and it's hard because I do understand there's a lot of conflicting information. One minute you hear one thing, next you hear the next, but... 
you know, the issue that I see is, you know, this is something where we're learning about it daily, you know, and I'm watching some of these amazing, brilliant minds, even on Instagram, these doctors who are working in ICUs, who are treating these patients, and they, you know, even day to day for them, it's different, you know, and they're discovering new things every day. So that's part of it. Um, I do wish that we had one central um, area or one central maybe committee that was the head w- what that is helping to make decisions for us because I do feel like it's a trickle down effect of certain states don't want to listen and then it trickles down to certain you know counties and then it trickles down to certain you know so there's no standard there's no real and then of course hot spots pick up and then people get mad when they have to get reshut down and it's like can we just all be on the same page and say we want to fight this and you know of course being isolated is awful and people losing their jobs is awful but dying is worse and that is happening people are still dying people are still getting admitted to hospitals which is crazy um so you know I feel like we're pretty careful everyone's pretty in my circle like I feel like people have been really good um but for the hoax comments, <laughs> oh, God, I just, I can't with that. I can't. I just can't. I just can't. Well, I have one final question. Okay. If you could say anything to the American people, because all of them listen to your podcast. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> what would it be? Um. Okay, so I hope that we can continue to work towards a better place, especially with all this going on, right? So it's like, to me, in my little realm and my little bubble, I really hope to continue to inspire people who maybe feel like they can't do something or, you know, to be a light of inspiration and to be a sounding board for, you know, maybe some middle ground. Like I feel like right now, our world is so polarized, right? It's like, it's red or it's blue. It's black or it's white. It's, you have to be this crazy extremist in either way. And to me, it's crazy because I feel like I live in gray, right? Like I've always lived in gray. I've always been the person that I'm like, I want to hear both sides. I want to understand the full picture. I don't, you know, that's why it probably would make me a horrible manager because I can't make a decision because I'm like, (laughs) I'm the person that I'm like, I understand your point and I understand my point. So it's like, I'm purely that person that I love hearing the middle ground, but I think there needs to be more of that. I think there needs to be room for a full conversation and level-headedness and you know, unfortunately, everything is so political and, and polarized and so um, charged. And I just don't, I don't, I don't respond well to that. Personally, I never have. I've never been someone, I think because I grew up in a household that was so like that. I mean, you know, my, like my dad and my mom are so yeah extreme and I can't, I don't handle that very well. I don't respond to it. Anytime I hear that, which is why I'm, I'm off I'm pretty much off of Facebook. Like I use Facebook for certain things, but you know, it gets so political and it gets so opinionated and it gets so this and that. And I'm like, I just like to be in my bubble of let's inspire, let's teach, let's, you know, get to a better conversation of how we're actually going to make things better. Um, I think there needs to be more room for that. Yeah. Victoria for president 2020. No, I do not want that. No. <laughs> Maybe I'll be the marketing team, but <laughs> but no. I, you know, I just want to have these conversations that are a little more real, a little more um, level-headed, and to feel like people are heard. I want everyone to feel like they're heard and understood. And, you know, I think that's the time we're in, and I hope we're going that way where people can feel like they're understood a little better, regardless of what it is, whether it's gay rights, black activism, whether it's, you know, trying to, in the medical field, whether it's, you know, it doesn't matter to me. I'm like, it's all things that we should be talking about. Um, 
So I, I'm here for that. And I feel like it's important for, to have those conversations, which is why part of it for me is, you know, being able to have this platform and, and sort of establish it and, you know, be able to hear from people from all walks of life. There's a lot of people, I still have a lot, so many coming on from different backgrounds and, you know, that experience different things going through their life and have become very successful people. Um, and I love those conversations. I think those are the valuable ones that I learn from. I love hearing about people's journeys and their life. I'm fascinated. And um, I think having more room for that would be fabulous. I didn't even mean to take that question there, but... <laughs> I love that you took it there. That's where I went with that it. That's an awesome place to take it. Yeah. You know what good. else is an awesome place? What? My bed. Ah. <sighs> <laughs> All right, my love. It is time for Annalise's bedtime. It is. Well, you guys, I have so much fun doing this podcast. You don't even know. You I don't love know. it, Annalise. This is so, I feel so special coming on here and. Yeah. I'm glad I, to have you on. I'm going to think of a nickname for all of my fans. <laughs> We're going to come up with something. We'll think of something. We will. Well, I, I, I'm really not good on, I'm good when I marinate with ideas. Let's marinate. You are. You got to marinate. Yeah. I support that. Cool. Thanks for having me back again. I, hope I to love do you. Again sometime soon. Oh my gosh, of course. All right, you guys. Thanks for listening, and we will catch you next time. Bye, you guys. Bye. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Sometimes I feel like we need an iconic comical moment just to take ourselves away, right? So if you're not already following her, head over to at a Voitilla, that's A V O Y T I L L A. Drop into her DMs. Just give her a little thought of what you thought of this episode. And I also want to give another really big shout out to my producer, editor, Matthew Meskin. You guys, I could not do this without him. And we are going to be dropping more episodes, probably two a week for at least the next three weeks. And he is just a gem of a person. So if you want to send him a little thank you, that's at M-A-T-T-M-E-S-K-I-N. Slip into his DM. Say, hey, Matthew, thank you so much for helping Tori out because seriously, I could not do this without him. I love him. This is my little brother, you guys. And I literally could not produce this show without him. Early on, Brody from The Morning Rounds literally dubbed us a saying, get yourself a Matthew. I mean, I'm serious. Like, we need to make some swag for Matthew. That's just, that's what needs to happen. It's all in the process. I promise. So, as I said at the beginning of the show, you guys, thank you so much for being here. One of the best ways to support us is to rate and review the show. I love hearing what you think, and I love it when you get specific, a part of, of an episode that you really loved or something that you took away from the show. Let us hear. Not to mention the fact that if you leave your Insta handle in the review, we're going to be sending over some super cute stickers and a selfie badge reel featuring Selena, our selfie icon. Make sure you are following us on our Insta at C-E-L-L-F-I-E underscore podcast. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. You can find all of our episodes on www.tipsfromtory.com. And while you're at it, you guys swipe up. Let me just tell you, these show notes below have tons of information about our guests and of course, our amazing sponsors. Thank you, you guys for being here with me. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your time and catch you on Tuesday.